board. It looks like the position will just be a dead draw. Well, I think we are heading very much towards uh, simplification, taking off swap the rook on e1 and rook e8. Though I'm not sure black will be in a rush to take on e1. Because, uh, but he is. <laughs> He's in a rush on the clock. Maybe that's why. Okay, and uh, I predict that all the rooks will leave the board. But uh, Wesley banking on the fact that his knight is much more flexible than the bishop. But it's going to be an uphill struggle because there are no more pawn majorities on the board whatsoever. Yeah, the only real imbalance here are black's C pawns, but in this position, they do they don't really uh, kind of ruin anything. They don't compromise black's chances because they are nicely protected and white has no potential past pawns. Uh, um, no weaknesses in the black camp. I'm wondering what uh, Wesley so has in mind in such a position that, oh, what a pity that I blundered. It's a dead draw, but I cannot agree to a draw. I have to pretend that I'm fighting, <laughs> <laughs> right? Because I, what is this? You can't agree to a, gr a draw, which which uh, gives you zero point. Um, so it's it's kind of uh, difficult to make yourself keep yourself serious about it. And it's going to be even more difficult after Gukash has uh, played that C pawn forward, offering a trade. I mean, the only option is for him just to flag Gukash. Well, and first uh, he has to play d5 for sure, I believe. Yep. Yeah, and this can step it's not step so easy forward to... with the king and then c6. Yeah, but it's not so easy to flag Gukash. Uh, we've seen him uh, having less seconds than uh, uh, Fabiano, for example, and playing faster. So, and he has a very good. Uh, intuition of for chess so he's going to be very fast i believe yeah, it feels like wesley needs to take some chances if he wants to win this game pushing forward with d5 at least locks things down on the light squares you ask the dark square bishop whether it's really going to sit there stuck the rest of the game you need to try something uh, trading these pawns off or allowing the capture on black's terms doesn't look promising just total symmetry there and okay he just brings his king forward okay slightly more active king slightly more active minor piece temporarily but how are you going to probe uh, Black's pawn structure? He tries to get to f5 with his knight or to b5 possibly and maybe trying to make uh, Gukash to make a decision towards do you want an endgame, pawn endgame? Because that can be very tricky time to time. So it's uh, you have to have all the self-confidence to defend that. What? But I believe after knight f5, maybe black will just go bishop f8 and g6. Exactly. And, uh, okay, so whilst this one is looking comfortably like a draw for Gukesh, which is what he needs, well, we do have breaking news. If you go back to the bird's eye view, take a look at the position between Ariantari and Ali Reza Faruja there on the right. The bar is all the way up in white's side, which means that Ariane has a huge advantage. On home soil, Ariantari could be the only Norwegian to strike with a classical victory, unless Magnus Carlsen shapes up. And yeah, it looks like Faruja has just taken a huge chance, which shouldn't pay off. It's a big gamble. Can Ariane convert his advantage? It's not obvious to the naked eye. It's not obvious at first, but it looks like here yeah, White is doing extremely well. Because this is the uh, line which we went all the way through, I believe, but he didn't take the knight on f7, but he went on with his d1 knight to capture the pawn on d6, and suddenly the white knight on d6 uh, creating a connect, uh, protected past pawn on d5 can give white some interesting uh, opportunities, though I don't understand why the bar is so optimistic. Yeah, is it? This black knight is not quite trapped. It can retreat via a4 or c4. Um, so that black knight can get back in the game. There is an attack. There is a hit on this pawn. It is a bit mysterious why white is doing so well. I like white's position in general. This black bishop is just terrible. But yeah, it feels like a huge gamble from Faruja against the tail ender of the tournament. Off offer. It is very typical. Ideas and played the rook. White's knight will eventually try and maneuver itself around to some more promising pastures. Uh, Judith, are you surprised by what's happened here? Well, yeah, after b4, white, uh, after c4, b4, uh, white can uh, dream of some better location for his knight to d5 or e4. He plays a3, look at that. Mm -hmm. 
slightly odd there. I don't know. I was uh, I'm kind of surprised on that move, but maybe he did not want to leave any opportunity for the black bishop to attack the b2 pawn. Now I guess king e4 is a must because otherwise black starts to move king e5. Mm -hmm. Black's king is coming. If white's knight could somehow just position itself on d5, everything would be under control, but uh, yeah, this is slightly annoying that the black king is coming in. Okay, he goes the other way. He's trying to jump into c6. He trying tries to... to catch some pawn over there. Yeah, trying to invade. This is a vulnerable pawn, but maybe it j can just move one square. Or the bishop can hit the knight, and yes. if you jump forward, you might get trapped. Yeah, because after knight c6, I think black just goes a6, and after that, king d6, white knight can get in trouble. Uh, I like that bishop c7 move. Back you go, my friend. And uh, there's the knight does retreat. Second time we've seen this position. How is white going to actually improve? Push some pawns, relocate the knights, and there we see Gukash also initiating another pawn trade. Yeah, pawns are flying off the board, and that is not good news for Wesley So, who needs to win. Uh, yeah, f5, it looks like black is just trying to create pawn imbalances on both sides. Remember, the bishop is stronger when there's pawns on both flanks. Black's king always start the race as well. In race territory, bishops tend to be superior to knights. I don't see any way in for the white knight. Uh, this white knight lacks a nice path to any promising squares. Okay, there we go again. Trying <laughs> again from a5. Still trying. Probably after bishop c7, knight b7 might be something to try out. But after that, it seems also bishop b6 and the knight can be trapped. <laughs> That's very dangerous. At you the same time, after f5, you can take on f5, king, king f4, king f5, and start start uh, sneaking in with your king, and you have a pass pawn on the f. Yeah. And anyway, white cannot lose anything, right? He has to go for double or nothing. Yeah, he needs to gamble here, but this is the moment of truth. Will Wesley retreat and admit that he's not getting anywhere? This game is likely to fizzle out to a draw, or is he going to run in with his knight? And yes, it might get trapped. Yes, it might have to sacrifice itself, but it will come at the cost of time for black. What do we think? Forward or back? Forward. Oh, it goes oh, back. We've been answered. Knight back to b3, putting all his pawns on light squares now, Wesley. So, But still, he needs targets. Not easy to find them. I like this move. The pawn will be difficult to attack on a6. But now he wants to go maybe bishop c7, knight b7. And a4 is there already to play a5 in the next move. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, the knight on b7 isn't the most active piece, and you can just simply maintain connection with the bishop to go to maybe out of or something. Yeah. Well, what is black going to do? It's his move. He can just pass. And by pass, we mean make a non-committal move. He goes back with the king, taking away at least the c6 square from white's knight. So it does jump into b7. You can always run back, so it's not trapped yet. Finally reached the b7 square. Mm -hmm. The big question is, what has this achieved? Does have a breakthrough on the other flank. This knight is acting as a distraction, deflection. But the black king is still within touching distance of its own pawns. Mm -hmm. Looks like a very solid difference from... Defense from uh, Gukesh so far. Clock times are basically level right now. It's a sudden death finish, one minute each. Nice move there, making sure the white king cannot come forward. The black bishop cuts the diagonal. But uh, maybe Wesley had a chance to trade pawns and then do the knight b7 idea. Mm -hmm. He can go back in that direction. He might try that again. Oh, now he's going in a different route with his knight. Still not sure where it's headed. <laughs> I'm not sure he knows where he's headed, but he has to try maneuvering, trying out to have it on d3, on c3, on d5. <laughs> <laughs> Practically every square on the board. Okay, Gukesh going passive. Is he hinting that he might start running with the black king over towards the white a pawn if the white knight strays too far? Looks like he's at least trying to scare Wesley here. I think he just wants to go back and forth e6 and d7, keeping the everything how it is mm -hmm. just kind of repeat yo-yo rotate around these squares not commit too much he's burning a lot of time suddenly Gukesh. it looks like he's starting to fear some pawn end games maybe as you mentioned judah if the knight for bishops uh if the knight for bishop trade happens oh and uh there we see Gukesh. he is ticking under 25 seconds remember the players only get a one 
move sorry one second increment after move 40 and no Gukesh is ambitious he's gonna run with his king to b6 and perhaps gobble up the a pawn it's a race now this black pawn will become extremely strong the black a pawn and knights are notoriously bad at stopping those pawns but white will have some fun on the other flank on the other side of the board well i think now it's really getting hot the question is what happens after knight f4 Black, I think, has to take on f4, takes, takes, and whether king b6, is black going to be in time? Mm, that's the big question. Black's king is going to go and gobble up the a-pawn, but it takes a long, long time, and he trades first. And Wesley also, 22 seconds. Oh, we, oh this is getting intense. Yeah, he's going after the f-pawn. He's won the f-pawn now, Wesley, so, but the black bishop is so agile, defends everything, blocks the past white f-pawn, and... I fear actually for Wesley now because this pawn is dropping and White's knight is so far away from preventing Black's a-pawn from running. The king will instead block. Yeah, it feels like Gukesh is the one playing for a win, but uh, watch the clocks, everyone, because Gukesh has 11 seconds and Wesley, ooh, down to Wesley two. has three seconds, too. Oh, he's got to try and flag Black, but he's and the one on the block. And there is a trick playing f6 in the next move. Yeah, White's running out of pawns, though. He's going to try. Black's bishop gives itself up. But the king can come all the way to verse to the h3, so white will not be able to. And Wesley, two seconds. Oh. And he won't be able to keep his pawn alive. We see the draw agreed. And Gokesh takes the Armageddon. Actually, Wesley, saw on, uh, Wesley lost on time. Ah. Either way, <laughs> Gokesh takes the Armageddon. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Gukesh, you know, he's running Magnus, a close rival in the Armageddon yes. <laughs> yeah. matches because, you know, he got five points out of six against, again, the one, some of the world's finest players. What a talent is the 17-year-old. Expect bright things from him. And uh, there we see the players on the camera leave the board and Gukesh walks